Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about the official release of RetroPie 4.6 for the Raspberry Pi 4. However, keep in mind it is beta support for the Raspberry Pi 4. So there may be issues here and there, but overall the team claims that uh, things are looking pretty good. It is based on Raspbian Buster on a pre-built Raspberry Pi image. And there are still some things to improve on, but most of the packages seem to run well. Well, let's check it out. We're going to set it up in this video. I did want to let you know if you go to wagnerstechtalk.com, then go to tutorials, and then go to Raspberry Pi 4 Gaming, and scroll down just a little bit to the table of contents, you'll see here official RetroPie setup instructions. Now these are instructions that I've created to step you through everything we're going to do in this video. Before we get too far in this video, I want to explain to you what we are going to do. We're going to set up the RetroPie 4.6 image. I'm going to show you a little bit about the Raspberry Pi 4 itself and how to set it up with a new case. And then we're going to go in and set up Wi-Fi and play a few games. We're not going to get into overclocking or any of the more advanced stuff. This video is simply going to help those who are new to the Raspberry Pi and RetroPie more specifically. There are two tools you're going to need in order to burn the image. First up is 7-Zip, so go ahead and download that for your operating system. Then you want to download Etcher at Belina.io Etcher, and it's available for multiple operating systems, so just pick yours and download and install it. Once you do that, you are then ready to download the RetroPie image. So go to retropie.org.uk and scroll down until you see Raspberry Pi 4. Click here and download the image. Once the image is downloaded, right click it and unzip it using 7-zip, extract here. You'll then have the .img file that you need to burn to the micro SD card. So now launch Etcher, click select image, select the .img file that you just extracted, click open. Then it says select target. Make sure you've already popped in your micro SD card and select the correct one by just clicking the little green checkbox. Click continue. Make sure that that's the correct card. Click flash and click continue. Congratulations, you're done with this step. Let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi 4 itself. Here's your power, your two HDMI ports, your 3.5 millimeter audio jack. You have two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and a gigabit ethernet. These are your GPIO header pins, and don't forget to wear a wrist strap when you're touching the board. I have another video on adding the heatsink, so I'll put a link up above, right there, if you want to watch that. And I highly recommend you use heat sinks and active cooling. There's your micro SD slot. And now we're going to install the Raspberry Pi 4 in this SNES style case from Vilros. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. And that's a cool little case. It has a few accessories and, of course, active cooling the fan. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the feed on and place the Raspberry Pi 4 in the case on the bottom portion and we'll go ahead and apply the fan. So I'm going to count out seven pins and drop the ground wire or black wire in there and apply the red wire to this pin here and we'll go ahead and close up the case. Now I'll go ahead and put the screws in and now we'll take our micro SD card that we just recently burned using Etcher which has RetroPie 4.6. 
Now we're going to plug the power in right here. And we'll plug the micro HDMI cable in to the port nearest the power. Just like this. Now we'll go ahead and plug in the USB keyboard into the 2.0 port here, which we're going to need for the Wi-Fi setup. So definitely hook up the keyboard and also a controller. What type of controller you use is up to you. You could also use one that comes with the Vilros kit, this SNES style. All right, so now let's power it on. And at first, it's going to show you this blue screen where it's resizing the micro SD card. And after a few minutes, you should see the RetroPie logo. Next, we need to set up the controller. So I'm going to hold down a button, press up, down, left, right, start, select, the A, B, X, Y, and the left, right, left trigger, right trigger, and the thumb, right thumb, left, all these analog buttons here. And once you're done, hit select for the hotkey and press A. The first time you set up Wi-Fi, it's going to ask you to do this. So we're going to go ahead and do it now. So we're going to go into Raspi Config, and we're going to go down to Localization Options and change the Wi-Fi country, in my case, to the U.S. So tab and enter. Country is now set, so now we'll go in again. I'm going to go ahead and change the time zone. I'm going to select U.S. And Central, Tab, and Enter. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and Tab and go to Finish here. And I'm going to move down to Wi-Fi. And now we're going to actually connect. So I'm going to select Connect to Wi-Fi. Next, select your SSID. In my case, it's Lucas. And we'll type in the password. And then it'll connect. Once connected, be sure and write down or remember this IP address because we're going to need it in the next step. All right, so we're going to go ahead and exit. And we're going to switch gears. We're going to move over to the PC, and I'm going to show you how to copy some games. Now on the PC, you type backslash backslash and whatever your IP address is. In my case, it's 10.10.150.56. After you press enter, you'll now see a ROM share. So if you double click there, you'll see a list of all the game consoles that are set up. I'm going to go ahead and select the Atari 2600. And at this point, you could just drop in any of your ROMs for the Atari 2600. For the main arcade games, I use the 0.78 ROM set. Alright, so after you do that, move back over to the Raspberry Pi and press Start on your controller and move down to Quit and then press A and A on Restart Emulation Station and A again and Emulation Station will restart and your games and consoles should now appear. Now let's have some fun. Let's play some games. We're gonna check out Donkey Kong Country on the NES. In the upper right, you'll see the frames per second being displayed through the remainder of the gameplay in this video. Hit select plus start to exit the game. That goes for all the games that you're gonna see here. All right, now we're gonna switch over to arcade. To insert a quarter, press the select button. Let's start for one player. Now we're looking at Time Pilot 84. This is a game I really enjoyed back in the day. Alright, now we're moving on to Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Keep in mind I've made no additional tweaks. Everything that you saw in this video is what you're seeing now. There are some improvements that you can make, which we'll investigate in a later video. Alright, now we're going to move on to the Sega Master System and play Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 
Please comment below with anything you'd like to see in future videos. I have a few ideas, but I'd really like to hear from you. Now we'll check out Neo Geo and play Metal Slug 5. Now we're going to switch over to the PlayStation 1. We're going to play Tekken 3. Please keep in mind the goal of this video was to show you how to set up the Retro Pi 4.6 and the Raspberry Pi 4 so you can get to playing games quickly. It isn't to show you all the games that you can play, but this gives you a good sampling of the games that you can play. I also want to show you Dreamcast and N64 in future videos, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. And that brings us to the end of this video. I tried to keep it around 10 minutes long, and hey, we got pretty close. I'm planning much more coverage of RetroPie on this channel in the near future, so definitely subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the latest and greatest tweaks and modifications. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button, and I hope to talk to you very soon.